Democrats aren't too sure whether to make Jeff Sessions' pot crack down an election issue. Washington Leading Democrats blasted Attorney General Jeff Sessions' Thursday announcement that he would open the door to a federal crackdown on states that have decriminalized forms of marijuana use. Sessions' action reverses a Department of Justice policy from the Barack Obama administration that effectively shielded those states from federal prosecution. Sessions needs to focus on issues like transnational criminal organizations and what the nation needs to do on investigating and prosecuting human trafficking, Senator Kamala Harris, D. California. A rumored 2020 presidential candidate, told HuffPost on Thursday. Sessions needs to leave Grandma's medicinal marijuana alone. She continued with a chuckle. Senator Mark Warner, D. Virginia, a centrist, declared that the move would seem to be the absolute opposite direction of where the country is headed and one more example of this administration being completely out of step with where both Americans are headed and, for that matter, Democratic and Republican state legislatures. This is a big mistake, Senator Chris Van Hollen, DMD, told HuffPost. In those states where the people in the states have made a determination to decriminalize or legalize marijuana, the federal government would better spend its resources going after real problems we've got. But criticizing Sessions' move is one thing. Turning his marijuana crackdown into an election year political cudgel? In stump speeches, campaign literature and ads? Is something else entirely. And when asked whether Democrats plan to use the marijuana crackdown against Republicans in the November elections, some of the same Democrats keen to clobber Sessions were noncommittal. That's way too early to predict that, Warner said. Van Hollen, chairman of the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee, the Democratic Senate campaign arm, said, every Democratic member of the Senate will have to decide what's best in their states. Senator Maisie Hirona, D. Hawaii, who also expressed her displeasure with Sessions' decision, argued that Democrats ought to run on kitchen table economic issues rather than marijuana. There are so many other things to run on, like the tax bill that just passed that does not help working families at all, she said in an interview. The Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee did not respond to multiple email requests for comment on the political salience of Sessions' move. The DSCC referred HuffPost back to Van Hollen's remarks. When asked about making marijuana an election issue, Democratic National Committee spokesman Michael Tyler provided a statement indicting Sessions' morally bankrupt an economically stupid decision without commenting on the potential political effect. Part of the challenge for Democrats who might want to turn Sessions' move into a partisan issue is that so many of their Republican colleagues responded with similar outrage. Lawmakers from states that have legalized the drug, including Senators Cory Gardner, R. Colo, and Lisa Murkowski, R. Alaska, were especially firm in their criticism. In a scathing floor speech, Gardner, who chairs the National Republican Senate Committee, the GOP Senate's campaign arm, said he was prepared to take all steps necessary to get Sessions to reverse the decision, including holding up Department of Justice nominees. Warner and Hirona both cited Republican condemnations in explaining the difficulty of making marijuana an election year issue. Still other Democrats were reluctant to even condemn Sessions' order. Senators Bob Casey, Pennsylvania, Jack Reed, Rhode Island, and Tammy Baldwin, Wiss, who faces a tough re-election battle, all said they were still too unfamiliar with Sessions' action to comment. Casey later issued a statement expressing serious concerns about how this action by Attorney General Sessions could impact Pennsylvania's medical marijuana law. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, D-N.Y., also pleaded ignorance when asked about the matter at a Thursday news conference. I haven't seen Sessions' comments on marijuana, Schumer said. Jeff Hauser, a former political communications chief at the AFL-CIO who runs the Progressive Center for Economic and Policy Research as Executive Branch Accountability Project, observed that congressional Republicans, partly at the prodding of the libertarian-leaning Koch brothers, have warmed the criminal justice reform in recent years. But Democrats would be mistaken to think that they are forfeiting opportunities for bipartisan progress by making an unrepentant drug warrior like Sessions a political liability for Republicans, according to Hauser. If Democrats get elected in part on this platform, that will ultimately make passing a bipartisan reform bill more likely because Republicans will want to put the issue in the past, Hauser said. The way you get Republicans to repudiate hacks like Jeff Sessions is by causing them to pay a political price. At the state level, Democrats appear less hesitant to make marijuana a significant part of their electoral strategy.
Sessions' action will be a net positive for Democrats pretty much everywhere, said Jared Leopold, communications director of the Democratic Governors Association. I don't see this as a winner for Republicans anywhere, Leopold added. But it is especially a problem in a state like Colorado, where marijuana is a major source of revenue for the state government. At least 15 Democratic gubernatorial candidates and current governors blasted Sessions' decision, including Washington Governor Jay Inslee, chairman of the Democratic Governors Association. Dr. Abdul El Sayed, a former Detroit health director running for the Democratic gubernatorial nomination in Michigan, where legalization is likely to be on the ballot in November, vowed in a statement that, if elected, he defied the crackdown tooth and nail. Later in the day, Former Michigan Senate Democratic leader Gretchen Whitmer, the frontrunner in the race for the state as Democratic gubernatorial nomination, tweeted that Sessions' move takes us backward in our fight to level the playing field. In Nevada and Colorado, two states with legal recreational pot where Republican attorneys general are seeking the GOP gubernatorial nomination, the Democratic Party was eager to jump on Sessions' announcement. Two Colorado Democrats vying to succeed Democratic Governor John Hickenlooper, Representative Jared Polis and former Colorado Treasurer Kerry Kennedy delivered stinging rebukes of Sessions' decision. Polis slammed Sessions for waging war on local marijuana. Kennedy called it an attack on Colorado voters. By contrast, Colorado Attorney General Cynthia Kaufman, a Republican who is running against Polis and Kennedy, reaffirmed her commitment to defending the Colorado law but declined to criticize Sessions' decision. Kaufman noted that it would still be up to federal prosecutors' discretion and consequently admonished residents to not freak out. Nevada Democratic Party spokeswoman Helen Kalla called on state Republicans, including Attorney General Adam Laxalt, to clearly and firmly commit to standing up against any meddlesome attempt by the Trump administration to infringe upon our state as right to grow our economy as our voters see fit. Nevada Democratic gubernatorial candidate Steve Sosolik denounced the move as well, declaring, we cannot and will not stand for this or any threat by the Trump administration to undo progress in Nevada. But Laxalt, one of Sisolik's opponents, merely offered a statement highlighting his past willingness.